Hello and welcome to SGN Tech Forum. This is second video of DNAC Software Defined Access video series. I'm breaking down the building SD access solution into several um, logical videos so that it is easy to follow. In our first video, we actually um, put up the integration between DNAC and ICE. Um, and now in this video, I'm going to deal with DNAC design and network settings. Um, then in follow of upcoming video, we'll talk about DNAC policy definition, and then eventually we will start dealing with the network element, configuring, uh, preparing them for overlay provisioning and onboard uh, and finally onboarding devices and validating the policies. So video one is already done. You can um, watch on my channel. This is video two design, and then we will have the policy. Video one, two, and three, they are basically preparation stage. So they are not dealing with network element yet. It is all we are getting ready to deploy or push those co uh, configuration. So what is in this video we have? So this is DNAC design as the access part two. DNA center provide a robust design application, right? So that you can do logical grouping. You can define your uh, network settings, everything at one place. And in this video, we are going to deal with a couple of uh, more detail points or low level uh, details like network hierarchy, network settings, device credentials, IP address pool, network profile or template. And while going through the video, I'll explain each and everything. I didn't copy any um, or uh, didn't uh, mention any wordings or explain what, what these things because I felt redundant. Uh, there is a, if you go to google.com, you can search with Cisco DNA Center guide, uh, configuration guide, and I'm using 133 release. That's why I picked 133. There are other releases available also, but pick the release you are dealing with. I'm dealing with 133. And here you can see, I'm dealing with network design hierarchy and all the things, what uh, step by step is mentioned here. Right, so I didn't feel like uh, putting extra wording on my document, but I I will I do talk about uh, when I configure them. What are what are those? What are the significance? I'll I'll, I'll talk about them. So let's not waste any time and uh, <coughs> go to DNA Center. In DNA Center, uh, in earlier video we already have DNA C and ICE uh, integration in place. So I can show you. I have externally connected ICE system where primary is uh, available, PX grid is not available uh, for some reason. I, I'll check that. Okay, let's go to design. Within design, network hierarchy, network setting, image repo, and these are the sub tabs. First, we will deal with network hierarchy. Okay, a network hierarchy is where we uh, represent our um, location, right? If you have offices, Obviously, you, you'll have offices, right? That That's why you're building a campus solution. So you can just start with the default global hierarchy. Within global hierarchy, you can create area. You can create any area like uh, USA or <coughs> EMER, right? And then assign the parent global. Um, I'm not going to create any uh, area, but I will walk you through what I have. So I created an area USA, then I created another area RTP and under area you can create buildings. So you have add buildings. I created my buildings and under buildings again you have add floor. So I created a floor here and under floor you can actually edit floor <coughs> and uh, upload a, if you are using wireless in your office, if you have survey image. Um, wireless survey image you can upload that and um, you can choose what kind of office it is um, and also you can specify the width and length uh, uploading the map comes handy when we deal with uh, wireless uh, solutions and I'll show you yeah, when we talk about fabric enabled wireless but for now it's optional you can upload a map if you have or if you can just leave it empty so this is how you're going to create your network hierarchy <clears throat> uh, once you're done with network hierarchy, you may have 
the buildings, uh, um, different buildings, different floors. You, um, you can do that. One thing I want to show you is if you edit building, the address is actually uh, important. Uh, latitude and longitude you see that these are the mandatory parameter so whenever you are creating a building you actually have to specify a, a right latitude and longitude okay uh, otherwise it will not allow you to save <coughs> now let's talk about the second tab called network setting within network setting there are multiple tabs um, uh, SP profile and wireless they are with wireless but the network device credential and IP address pool they are like three important uh, tabs so let's click on network within network you can uh, define your I'll, I'll come back to AAA server later but uh, what you can do you can define your DSCP servers you can define your DNS server you can define your syslog server you can define your NetFlow collector NTP server and select the time zone whatever time zone you want so these are like a, a global settings right and that these network settings uh, can be global and will be inherited by the site so if I go to a site RTP is a site you can see that I have this symbol inherited from glo global but if I wish I can change this and apply a site level network setting so if I have a site level setting which is different than global setting the the site level will take precedence so that's how you define your uh, network settings again go uh, DSCP DNS server syslog etc uh, you may see that AAA server so if you want to add another server just click on add server and then here you can select what you want so I have added my AAA server also which is um, used for uh, 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 admission control right and authentication and admission control and we will talk about this uh, uh, thing when we actually deal with provisioning okay so I'm just not going in deep in about this but this is how you can define your subnets uh, network uh, services then device credentials under device credentials you have CLI credential SNMP credential HTTPS credentials and uh, these three credentials right so CLI credential is the username and password DNAC will use to SSH into devices or or um, if you uh, select telnet then telnet into devices right so if you want to add a credential you have to give a name of this credential store pick a username and password so that is the CLI SNMP credentials you can define your SNMP uh, communities uh, version 2c read community so you, you can select this one and then click add you can cho choose v2 read specify community right and then you can see write community and if you are using SNMP v3 then you can choose SNMP v3 where you can define your author authorization and privacy also right because uh, SNMP v3 is secure one HTTP HTTP is really not necessary um, until you are doing uh, app hosting I am running app hosting that's why I have selected the credentials the uh, one thing you should uh, remember that whenever you are de defining a credential you have to come here and hit save so that all the settings what you applied is saved okay uh, then come back to address pool so here yeah, I can define your address pool the different address pool you will be utilizing in SD access solution and there are two different kind of pool we utilize one is underlay which is uh, uh, if you are running LAN automation or um, uh, border to fusion connectivity right so that is your uh, underlay pool and overlay pools are where your actual uh, users reside so if you have uh, users uh, in different segments like if you have a production user or development user you can a wired user wireless user a guest user you can de define different address pool for them and where it is applied we will see in our uh, upcoming videos uh, when we deal with provisioning <coughs> 
image repo image repo is uh, again uh, uh, easy so you can import image and you can use those images to upgrade your devices right network profile network profile is actually um, used to apply template so if you if you uh, dnac while provisioning pushes some configuration right the cts configuration lisp configuration i have talked about all this technology right in my sda technology and enablement series so dnac actually apply those settings but if you have some standard config right uh, like if you have some standard acls or uh, um, or some sort of config which is uh, consistent across your network you can use a template to apply uh, uh, apply on devices while you run the provisioning then finally the authentication template and we are there are three type of authentication template available close open and easy connect we are using close authentication uh, that mean uh, the all the ports will be using dot one x by default so this is all uh, uh, about uh, dnac design uh, for our uh, purpose i have already have a site defined and i'm going to show you uh, the fabric which is part of rtp 11 fabric and i have all my network uh, device credential and IP address pool defined as a part of that. In next video, I'm going to talk about uh, policy and then start, we start building our SD access solution. So I hope you uh, like the video and please, please follow along.